What's going on folks? In today's video, we are investigating Home Depot. Now the earnings come out tomorrow by the time this video airs, but we wanna know if it's a good time to get into this company. And in today's video, we are gonna find out just that by going through the numbers of Home Depot, investigating what they're doing right and what they're doing wrong, and find the intrinsic value of this company so you'll know by the end of this video if you're getting it for a good deal. And that's the most important thing. So if you're a long-term investor, you found the right channel. My name is Leo, I'm a value investor, and I love just investigating numbers of companies to try to get the actual factual scoop. I got bars today, folks. Look at that. Anyways, here's Home Depot. Current price is $290 at the time of recording this video. The last earnings uh, reports have been pretty good for this company. They've been beating their earnings every single quarter. So maybe on May 16th, they will do that again. Now, here's the thing, folks. When earnings season comes along, it's important to realize that people like overreacting to the company if earnings are well sometimes you see the stock price bouncing up and down uh, sorry up bouncing up if earnings are po uh, poor obviously the company will probably decrease in price now that's up to you to capitalize on the value of what this business presents now there's value to be said about every business now take a look at home depot over the last year even though they've been beating all of their earnings take a look at this the price has been pretty much just moving sideways that's something to keep in mind so they've been beating earnings the last four quarters but over the last year the price has been moving sideways and the 52 week, 52 week range of this company has been from the low for pretty much 264 to 347 currently at this 290 we're pretty much in that middle zone right now so it's quite strange to see that considering a company has been beating all of their earnings now the software i have in front of me is called stock spec it's a software that i use to analyze these companies quickly and effectively if you want to get your hands on it follow the links in the description box below it costs nothing uh for the first seven days after that it is cost pretty much the same price as your netflix subscription the only difference is this will help you earn money with your stock portfolio netflix just essentially is a waste of time in my opinion so seven out of ten now this is going based off of the five uh years of their financial statements so this is grading the financial strength of the company now they're only getting docked in three different aspects one their current ratio their return on equity on average and their debt to equity over the last five years so let's investigate those three numbers the current ratio currently it's at 1.41 the software likes companies that have a current ratio of 1.5 and higher what does that indicate for those who are new to the channel that indicates to us that they have enough assets on hand to cover those liabilities and plus some as a margin of safety which we like to try to find 1.41 it's still pretty decent it's pretty much there it's gonna it's it's obviously works on a very much a binary system. Now, if you're fine with that ratio, which honestly I am fine with that 1.41 is a fine ratio, then th you can ignore that score. Now, the one thing I would keep in mind though, which is not looking too healthy, is the return on equity average over the last five years sitting in the negatives. Currently, it's at negative 87%. However, they've had massive increases over the last, um, like the last 20, 12 months by going into the thousands. I, I don't know what the turnaround is with this business, but basically their return on equity is skyrocketing. Now, another thing to keep in mind, folks, is their debt to equity ratio, which is incredibly high. I, I've never seen a company this high of a, uh, of a debt to equity ratio. Now, what that is indicating to us is that Home Depot is extremely over leveraged in debt to fuel the their operations now a company can either fuel their operations through equity which is like our stockhold and stuff like that and uh and debt now back when interest rates were extremely low companies off a lot of companies fell into this trap of just borrowing money because it was cheaper to just borrow money on low interest and they would make that return back no problem now here's a problem a lot of interest rate well, interest rates have been increasing higher and higher now we're running to the scenario where a lot of companies will pretty much suffer from those high interest rates if they're unable to meet those debt requirements home depot may be one of those companies get we'll investigate that further but let's take a look at the other information so something to keep in mind major red flag i do not like that debt to equity ratio and you shouldn't either now 
Apart from that, everything else is looking pretty solid. They have a relatively low price to earnings ratio on average. Their EPS has been skyrocketing forwards over the last five years. So if you've been holding on to this company over the last five years, you should be very happy about that. Now, their share dilution is down, which is great. That means they are buying back shares. The net income has increased. Their free cash flow has increased. Their return on invested capital is sitting at a whopping 32%, which is phenomenal. And the revenue growth is up by 10% over the last five years a somewhat of a low number but an increase nonetheless but we are very we are liking that a lot just that this debt to equity ratio is really really truly bothersome i gotta say however you go to the almond z score and it's saying a 7.01 and that indicates to us that based off their books this is pretty much a um a metric to measure bankruptcy um like let's say an issue of bankruptcy, anything above three folks, that company is deemed safe. 1.8 to three, that's where a lot of issues will potentially occur. It's in this gray zone. And anything below 1.8, that is a complete danger zone. Stay away from companies that are there. It's a helpful metric to take a look at if you're not sure about certain companies. Like this one, like Home Depot. Based off this metric right here, Alma Z score, it's well above three, so their risk of bankruptcy pretty much extremely nil. However, this is something that may affect it going through in the future. That's something to definitely keep in the back of your mind. They're a company that does pay out a dividend. The dividend yield is 2.68%, which works out to be $7.8 billion in dividends paid. And the five year average free cash flow is $12.7 billion, so they're easily able to cover those dividend payments and have some money left over to potentially pay down debt, which I would imagine that's what they should be doing to let's say lower this debt number. And currently their free cash flow on average, sorry, for the trailing 12 months is $11.5 billion. So they can easily still cover those dividends, which is great, along with potentially paying down this debt. So, so far with Home Depot, they are pretty much financially sound based off the numbers like they are able to meet their obligations however they're just extremely leveraged now it's either i i, I there's a lot more investigation to look into this whole debt to equity number because that is massive but everything else seems to be pretty positive the free cash flow is growing revenue growth is growing i would say if their debt number is that high take away or decrease the dividend or take it away altogether and just rectify that now, that's my personal opinion. Now, once their earnings comes out and potentially if it's if they miss their earnings, obviously you'll see the stock price decrease. Now, the one thing you have to just be concerned about is just that debt level. Now, what should we be paying for Home Depot today? Well, I'm going to load up the second part of the software here, which is the price analysis section, which is the intrinsic value calculator essentially of this business. I could do uh, up to 20 years of analysis. I'm going to do 10 because that's how long I plan on holding this company hypothetically. And I'm going to do three different assumptions based off the historic numbers of, of Home Depot, what they've shown in the past to try to predict what they may do in the future, utilizing some conservative metrics. I'm going to fill out those lovely boxes and we'll talk about it in just a second. And folks, if you're enjoying the video, hit that like button and subscribe button. And like I said, for this software here, Follow the links in the description box below. Start your seven day free trial. You'll definitely like this part here. So if you're new to the channel, I like to try to be as conservative as possible. That's kind of my spiel. That's kind of the whole focus of the channel. Be conservative investor, think for the long term. I've done three different assumptions based off of their revenue growth. And I'm assuming the absolute worst. I'm doing 2% revenue growth based off the fact that they only, grow the re they only grew the revenue 4% from last year. So I've done two three and four, let's say it stays the same based upon, uh, basically my whole aggressive category is if they just kept the same numbers going forward uh, for the next 10 years, everything else is a haircut. Now, it's a $294 billion company. I think this company will be around in the next 10 years based off the fact that it is a home renovation company. Everyone's gonna renovate their homes. The only problem is, the housing market may be an issue because if everyone's trying to buy their homes, do they have in this overpriced housing market, is there enough means to actually renovate those homes? That's the one thing that's kind of been chilling in the back of my head. So currently price comes out to be $180 on average calculation. What does that mean? 
basically, if we want to get a 13% return on this company, on average, we should be paying $180. On the low end, $130. On the aggressive side, $230. We, we haven't seen that just yet. The time we saw that was probably back in March 2020 when everything got shut down due to the pandemic and prices for Home Depot went down to $152. But something to keep in mind, and I just had this thought, basically with everyone with this overpriced housing market and people's means just being stretched thin with high inflation and high interest rates are people really going to be doing home renovation is this a major priority i don't really think so so basically if you believe these numbers here let's say you believe what they'll they'll do exactly what they did in the last year four percent going forward 230 dollars is the price you're looking to potentially get this company at if you want a 13% return to be essentially the average of the S&P 500. I'm going to wait until it pretty much at this $180 point price point for it to make sense for me. That's personally what I think. But do I think it's a solid business? Absolutely. Uh, just concerned about this debt to equity number, which is extremely massive. And the economy going forward to justify people visiting this shop because it's it's home improvement, right? And when times are good and everyone has excess cash and they want to improve their bathroom or whatever, you'll see a lot more people going into this company, or into the into Home Depot. Anyways, folks, that's the video. If you found it helpful, share it with a friend. And if you haven't done so already, hit the like button and subscribe button. I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.